Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. As I was cleaning up some old boxes that I had lying around, I found something really, really special. It was actually a CD. And it wasn't any CD, but it was a CD with Windows XP on it. But it just wasn't a normal version of Windows XP. It was actually my version of Windows XP that I had at that time. And at that time, I was just learning Linux. And I actually had a virtual box, the virtual machine. At that last time, it was like owned by Sun Microsystems before it was later taken over by Oracle. However, I found these old files and so I copied them over to my computer. And guess what? I have Windows XP, the one that I used many, many years ago on my Linux system once again. And I am able to relive some of those memories now and today I'm just going to take down a trip down memory lane of Windows XP I actually really did enjoy that version of Windows and also it's just some thoughts about how that compares now to the version of Linux that I'm using today and before I get did get to that I do want to mention that if you have not seen my video on how to install a virtual box or virtual machine and then also install Linux Mint inside of it be sure to check out the link in the description below and that'll go through how you do that now whenever you do have a virtual machine you could also back up anything that you've installed here and it saves it as a OVF file and then it also has an accompanying virtual uh, manager or virtual machine disk so this is actually the whole operating system basically that you actually put on the virtual machine and it's very, very simple to do in this virtual box. All you do is you go file, import appliance, and I'm not going to go through it because I already did it. You find the file wherever you had it, which is going to be this OVF file. And then the OVF file has all the settings that will allow it to use this uh, virtual machine disk. And that took me about less than three minutes. And now I'm going to go ahead and power up my version of Windows XP back in the day. So let's go ahead and get this started and relive some old uh, memories, okay? So let me uh, minimize this real quick while it's loading up. Oh, there it goes, Windows XP welcome window. Oh man, let me uh, make this a little bigger. I'm gonna make this full screen just to get the full effect. And I really, really did like Windows XP. Uh, I like Windows XP and I also, in my opinion, the versions of Windows that I liked the most uh, were Windows XP, definitely. Uh, I actually really like Windows 95 and Windows 7. I uh, think out of all those, those were my favorites uh, because they were the most stable and they were ones that I just really, really enjoyed. Now, I did start using Windows even before Windows 95, Windows 3.1, if I remember. You know, that was still like command line, if I remember. But uh, Windows XP, uh, actually a very beloved version. I think, I guess for many people, um, it was actually a really beloved version. And just looking at it now, you know, honestly, I think it's, it's aged pretty well, in my opinion. And it runs, obviously it runs really good because obviously I have new hardware. And I'm just, I don't know, I'm like, I, I kind of get nostalgic and emotional about uh older technologies because it kind of takes you back to the days of when you did use it and then who you kind of were at that time and you know I hate to say it, but as you get older you become more nostalgic you know as, as corny as this sounds so let me see if the internet still works on Internet Explorer um, I'm not sure what version this is but it's uh, probably extremely outdated uh, yep so probably doesn't work there let me try again it probably doesn't work because uh, because it's such an old version, uh, but I'm going to try again. Let me see if that was just a fluke. Yep, I don't want to tell Microsoft because they already know. No thanks. Nope. All right, so let me see if I had Firefox here. I think I might have. Uh, let me see. Ooh, no Firefox. Hmm. And as you can see there, I've been using Open Office for a long time. Well, it's actually called LibreOffice now. But at that time, when it was owned by Sun Microsystems, or not 
owned, but it was owned by Sun Microsystems. Sun started a lot of software and hardware back in the day, you know, but, you know, once they went out of business or actually got sold to bigger companies, they just failed to exist, you know, and, but luckily uh, the softwares that they created are still alive today, just in different forms. So OpenOffice is now LibreOffice. Uh, they still have Java, kind of. And let me see what else I had here. I had, okay, I had Apple and iTunes installed. I'm pretty sure it's iTunes and man. And right now, uh, you know, uh, what I love about Windows, even though this version is so old and I'm kind of being sarcastic, it's still going to try to update things. So if I remember correctly, this is actually because of the AVGN software antivirus. It's trying to uh, contact the AVGN servers so it could download updates but this is probably extremely outdated so I'll probably be seeing that pop up quite a bit uh, maybe I might just get rid of that because that's extremely annoying one of the main reasons why I left Windows to begin with but uh, let me go ahead and turn this off so it doesn't come up every second maybe I'll just uninstall it because I just don't need it anymore so look it's still trying to update that is so crazy so okay so i'm gonna go ahead and uninstall this really quick um, and i will be back all right let's go ahead and uninstall abg it's pretty amazing that i didn't really have much software here you know that's pretty cool and man i'm really i'm really impressed with how windows xp even now it's still uh works i mean and it, and it honestly it's pretty fast okay um yeah let me move that yes remove I mean, i'm not gonna lie to you this still doesn't make me want to go back to windows but you know windows xp at that time it was back in a day where you weren't constantly getting updates all the time uh you weren't constantly being monitored and uh, spied on like you are nowadays um, but you know as you can see it's still annoying <laughs> So, great, my computer's at risk. Yep, too bad. Because I'm on a virtual machine. So it's uninstalling. Hopefully I won't have to re, uh, restart this virtual machine once this uninstall is done. Wow. Still runs great. Maybe if I could find some old uh, Windows XP games, <laughs> maybe I'll try to install them and run them on here. I don't, I don't think it's going to work, but... Wow, so actually this is from 2009. Wow. So seven years ago. That's quite a while ago. So yeah, like I said, you know, I've been, you know, using Linux for a while now. And at that time when I was learning virtual machine or yeah, the virtual machine, I still was using Windows and I still kept my Windows machines, you know, uh, because at that time, you know, the Linux wasn't at the point where I could just completely not use Windows, okay? And this is one of the reasons why I went ahead and put in a virtual machine. So then I could still have access to it. And then just like slowly but surely just get away from having a separate Windows machine completely. So the reason, if I remember correctly, why I did this is because if I ever did need Windows, uh, after I made the move completely to Linux, at the time it was Ubuntu, I would still have it in a virtual machine, okay? So I didn't completely get away uh, from Windows. So, okay, restart the computer. No, not really. I don't want to restart the computer. And look, I think my internet works now. Great. Awesome. Yeah, I don't want to do a survey. Oh, wow. So I'm using Internet Explorer. Let me see if I could go to a website. Let's go to CNET. That's a pretty graphic-intensive site. Let's see if it is still load up. Nope. Uh, let's go to Google then. And I had some plugins on here. Yeah, yep. Oh, well, I might have to play around with it to get the internet to work again. Or maybe it just might not work. But that doesn't matter. Um, I'm just, just testing this out. Just going back down memory lane. Wow. I am so... I'm so like impressed by technology you know i keep saying that over and over but these are some of the things that it allows you to do you know it's it's a living museum you know so 
not only can you relive old memories, but you know, you could really see what technology was and how it was and the progress of it just by doing things like this. You know, and I let me see what version of Internet Explorer is this. So it should be about right here. So Internet Explorer seven. Whoa, yeah, that's pretty old. But yeah, so there's really not much here. Uh, I just, you know, everybody's familiar with Windows, but just to go back and see Windows XP and just kind of see like what type of user that I was at that time. And, you know, really things haven't changed much, you know, like uh, let me minimize this. Okay. Now, now, one of the things that I did like about Linux Mint is the fact that it does give an uh, interface that is fairly uh, familiar to people who use Windows. And so it's not a, a really huge departure. Okay. Now, some people might not like that, but the great thing about Linux is that, you know, spend the time and you could actually customize it and make it look like whatever operating system you like. But as you could see, very, very similar to Windows. I mean, as a matter of fact, it probably shares more in common with Windows XP than it does definitely Windows 10, you know, at least Linux Mint does. So, wow, I'm so, so impressed by this. Uh, it's it's absolutely amazing. I'm probably going to spend some more time just playing around with this uh, because it just uh, brings me back to the days where really there was no other options beside Windows. And, you know, if you wanted to use a computer, uh, Windows was it. And, and I could see some of the things that I did back then. I like to keep things very clean and simple. And so I don't have a lot of junk here. And I do the same things when I'm on uh, my Linux boxes. You know, I just like it very minimalist and clean. So that's it for this episode of Windows XP on Linux. If you had any old Windows memories or Apple Mac memories or just putting it on a virtual machine, Leave them in the comments area below. I, you know, I'd like to know some of your nostalgic memories. And don't forget, uh, if you do like these videos, you found value in it, be sure to leave a like, subscribe. And I'm also on Snapchat at Geek Outdoors. Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com and I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.